Welcome to Exchange Life. Glad that you all could make it here tonight. Let me pray one more time. We're going to enter into some things today that I feel are very important to all of us uh, anytime, but especially this time of year, uh, what the message of Christ is. So, Father, um, Holy Spirit, come. Let's just start there. Holy Spirit, come. May we avail ourselves to you with abandon, with everything that we have. Father, I pray against anything that comes contrary to the name of Christ and right now declare that it is rendered powerless in this room. We will give you the honor and the glory because of what you do in us, the hope that we have in you. May we find that tonight. May all of us find that tonight. We love you. Amen. Exchange life. Exchange life. What is it? It's a Christ-centered process. Delivers hope and support to anyone seeking a life free from the snares of sin, suffering, and pain. It's designed to help you exchange agreement with lies for trust in the truth of God's word. Four elements. Corporate, that's what you're doing right here. Men's and women's groups. If you're not participating in those, um, I would encourage you to do so. Uh, that is truly where things and seeds that are planted in this room begin to take root is in those rooms where you're able to go and share and talk about your experience with the topic at hand. So if you're not participating in those, I really encourage you just to sit in on a couple of them. Um, every week, every other week, just make yourself available. Workbook with a first responder. If you've been here for a little while and you haven't started that process, Come see me, and we will get you going with a person who has been through the workbook a little bit, a little bit, probably a lot of bit since you haven't started, um, much more than you have. Uh, and then hopefully you'll come back and you'll want to be a first responder. First responder essentially is a person that loves well and has received that love uh, from Christ and from somebody else, and they want to share that back with you. That's the goal of Exchange Life, is to continue this process of discipleship, sonship, and welcoming people into this exchange life that hopefully you are now living out on a daily basis. That's the goal. Tonight, we're going to kind of do a little audible. I know it was supposed to be on sexual brokenness. Uh, no, we're not going to go there before Christmas. We're just going to go ahead and keep it a little bit lighter than sexual brokenness. If you showed up for that, sorry, you can see me later and we can talk about it. Uh, if you're tuning in online, yeah, we're not going to do that tonight. Not before Christmas. Um, although it is an important topic, we'll probably handle that first part of next year. Uh, tonight I want to talk to you about how miracles transform. How the miracle of Jesus' birth brought transformation in everything that he did. In a week or so, we're going to celebrate the birth of Christ and the miracle that he brought. Um, the miracle and the reason why we have presents, we have lights, we have commercials, we have songs, we have food. Uh, we have traffic. Can I get an amen from anybody on traffic? Yes. What happens? It is in, in I don't know, I'm not going to call it insane, but it is out of sorts, I think, a lot of time. And I was driving over here tonight, and the Lord, in the mist, and the clouds, and the dreariness, and the weight, even in the physical of the rain, um, the Lord wanted me to tell somebody here tonight, uh, tonight is your night. You have struggled, you have gotten here, you have endured, you have sat in the rain, you have encountered the mist, everything that wanted to prevent you from showing up here tonight. Tonight's the night for somebody. I pray that that will be you. Um, I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing faces in this crowd that we haven't seen in months. And there's a special reason for that. It's not by accident that you are sitting here tonight. So my prayer for all of us is not that we would press in. God did send his son for a variety of different reasons. He sent his son to undo the works of Satan. We'll read about that in 1 John. He sent his son to bring his kingdom, he says this, to bring his kingdom to within arm's length. No longer is the kingdom of God some far distant, out there, 
nebulous, kind of ethereal thing. Jesus says, no, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is available. It is right here for you. It's another reason why he came. He came to be an example to us, not of what God can look like when he lives a human life. It's the exact opposite of what a human being can look like when he lives God's life for them. He does what he did. He did what he did, I should say, not as God. That would be impressive, but I'm not, I'm not really motivated to follow after that. No, he came and what he said is, look, I'm human. And when a human taps into the recesses and the resources of the Father, this is what your life can look like. He didn't do it so that we'd have something that we can never attain. He did it as an example to us. The Bible even says it. He is our elder brother, not our elder God or our elder untouchable deity. He said, you, I am your elder brother. And so he did what he did so that we can have an example of what a life submitted to the Father's will for them actually looks like. And he came to reveal the full nature and character of God. We read about that too. Essentially what Jesus says is, if you've seen me, if you know me, if you understand what my message is, you've seen the Father. You've seen him because I'm just like him. He's the, I'm the mirror image, Hebrews talks about this, of what the Father represents. And what did he do? Jesus brought, brought about transformation everywhere he went. He transformed everything that he came into contact with. And that is what the Father desires for our life. That is what Holy Spirit desires for your life tonight, Preach. is that you will walk in transformation every step you take take. You are a broker of transformation. That's you. It might not feel like it. It might You might not envision yourself as being that, but that is who you are. That's what the Bible says. You brokered that thing. Everywhere he went, everything was changed. And so my question is, if I'm still sitting in the same thing that I was sitting in last week, there's a problem, and it's not on his end. <laughs> it's I'm looking at it when I look in the mirror. He wants to transform us. And he wants to transform us in four ways. He wants to transform us emotionally. I'm going to use dark color because it doesn't show up. Emotion. Spiritual. Physical. And he also wants to tra transform the way that we think about our perspective on eternity. Those four things is what we're going to talk about tonight. I don't even have slides for it because this is how fresh this thing is to me. So bear with me. I'm preaching to myself here this tonight. Our emotional reality is transformed, period. Elizabeth, the aunt of Jesus, the mother of John the Baptist tells us that our emotional life is transformed because of what Jesus did, because of his coming to earth. If you know the story, Elizabeth was barren. She and her husband, Zach Zacharias, couldn't have children, and she was beyond the years of being able to have children. With that, she lived with scorn, shame, and rejection from culture around her. The emotional toll that that took on her life is evident because they had to go out to where they were. In other words, they were kind of separated even from culture and community. And if you know about Zacchaeus at all, Zachariah, excuse me, at all, he was a Levitical priest. Now you're thinking, what in the world does that mean, a Levitical priest? Well, let me give you a little lesson on the priesthood that we find in Scripture, because it's important for us to know this. <clears throat> Levitical priests would go to the go to God, and then they would turn around, and they would go to the people with the message. That's what they would do. God, what are you saying? Okay, great, we're in the Holy of Holies. This is what you want to say? Okay, we'll go after, and we will tell the people. They had a son named John the Baptist. Guess what John the Baptist was? He was a Levitical priesthood. He said, this is what God is telling you, and here's the message. Repent. Repent. Pretty straightforward stuff. I jokingly say all the time, he would not have been the guy that you would want to see in the morning. Walking down the street, <laughs> getting coffee at Starbucks, you're standing in line, you're like, hey, John, what's up? Repent. 
That's all, that's his message. That's all he says over and over again. It would just be like, dude, can't you just, I mean, lighten up a little bit and repent, you know? No, is the answer to his question. Here's the beautiful part about what Jesus did. He transformed that. Because we find that Jesus was of the order of Melchizedek, Malik Zadok, priesthood. And you're wondering, what does that mean? Well, remember the Levitical priesthood would go to God, and then they'd go to the people, right? Jesus, on the other hand, comes to the people. Um, you know what? I've got that backwards, don't I? It is backwards. Thank you, Lord, for identifying that before I let you all <laughs> astray. All right? Levitical priesthood would go to the people, and then they'd go to God with the, inv with the invitation. Okay, catch that. I totally botched that. Sorry for watching at home. Hit rewind. <laughs> Levitical priests, what's your problem? I'm going to go make sacrifices. What's your problem? I'm going to go make sacrifices. That's what Levitical priests did. Jesus came and flipped the script. He transformed it. Malik Zadok. What he said was, this is what God is saying, and I'm going to tell you about it. This is what God is saying. And I'm going to tell you, you about it. That's why his message was so much different. He brought transformation emotionally. The public scorn of past failure, the Bible says, and, and God declares over your life. You're publicly scorned. It's gone. It's gone. Elizabeth was given a son as a result of that, and that was removed. The emotional shame of comparing to what is normal in other people is removed. That divorce you had, that relationship that broke up. That event that occurred in your life, that's removed. The, evo the emotional pain is removed. The scars of disappointment are healed. You're given the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the Bible says. That's yours to keep. The emotional healing that God wants to bring. You receive the garment of praise. When you praise God, a garment is given to you. Did you ever think about that for just a minute? Think about it in the supernatural. Think about it in the realm of the eternal. When you praise God, you are given a garment that is laid upon your shoulders. I don't know about you, but that is pretty powerful stuff. And it is a covering that he gives you. No more emotional pain. No more emotional exposure. You have a garment of praise instead of a faint spirit. And he lays that upon you. It's almost like this mantle that he gives you when you praise God. The healing of Elizabeth's emotions would provide the, a voice to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Because guess who else was scorned by public? Mary. Ill illegitimate son, illegitimate pregnancy, illegitimate everything. And people scorned her. But Mary, the aunt of Jesus, came along and said, I know exactly what you're feeling. Because I've walked in your shoes. But Jesus is going to bring transformation. I'm going to pray tonight on these four points. And we're going to pray that God would heal you emotionally tonight. So join with me. And I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, because his name is above every other name, we come to you in his authority. And what we say to emotional pain is you have no more access to our minds. God, I speak to minds right now that are angry. I speak to minds that are frustrated. I speak to a mind that is disappointed emotionally. A mind that needs to be still. I speak against hyperactivity, insomnia. <clears throat> That's what I speak to. I speak to a mind that um, we're just going to go after these things. Bipolar, Lord. Depression, God. Anxious thoughts. And in the name of Jesus, we say transform us. Transform our mind right now. By the power of your spirit, transform our mind. And God, we release a mind that is still. A mind that is peaceful. A mind that is set upon you. Our thoughts now are going to be ones of Psalm 7, it's in the Psalms, in the, you, you say that, that our mind 
is established on you. Though our heart grows weary, God, you give us strength. Father, I pray against a mind that has been disrupted by events that have taken place lately. That's scampering. That's, the, that's what I see. That's scampering around trying to figure things out. God, you just say, no, stop running. Be still before me and be healed. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. Amen. Here's the truth. Your emotional pain has not been wasted. Elizabeth's pain has not been wasted. She used it to usher in and encourage the mother of Jesus, Mary, in the midst of that. Our physical reality is transformed too. That's the second one that I've got on my notes. Physical reality. Mary and Joseph, right? Mary's physical reality was changed. Would you agree with that? I mean, everything about her was changed. It's like, you've got a baby. Okay, everything changes. Any physical transformation brings with it a responsibility of what has been given to us by Christ. We're able to endure physical affliction so that the life of Jesus can be released in our mortal flesh. Some of you right now are sitting in chronic pain. We're gonna pray against, we're gonna pray for this stuff tonight, so just hold on. We do not lose heart. The Bible says our outward nature is wasting away, but our inward nature is being renewed day after day after day. So physical affliction. Upon the deliverance from our bondage, we're asked to do one thing when our physical nature is changed. We are asked to change our appetite, to ingest food that brings benefit to us. Yes, in the physical, that's a very true thing, but also in the realm of the spiritual too, that we don't entertain vain imaginations that try to set themselves up against God, but instead we are steadfast and immovable on the physical healing that's gonna take place. When a woman gets pregnant, her appetite changes. Ladies, can I get a little amen by that? I'll never forget. Christina, the night that our son was born, Grayson, we were down and we were in a class. We're six weeks out, by the way. We're at a class and we're driving home from Big Baylor downtown. And she says, hey, there's a Whataburger over there. You know, we're driving along. Hey, there's a Whataburger over there. Well, the Whataburger over there was like over there, right? It was it was a mile and a half down the road and whatever else. And I'm like, there's a Wendy's up here. Just there's Oh, yeah, there's a Wendy's just a couple blocks up. And she lost it. She lost it. <laughs> she lost it. No, I said, I want Whataburger. Their vegetables are fresher. <laughs> I, like, I don't know what is going on with you, but okay. They do the exit. You gotta have it. And there she was. Her appetite had changed. That night, about three o'clock, her water broke, and we welcomed our son into this world. He's, he was ap- he was absolutely fine. And there he goes. Six weeks early, you know, he's absolutely fine. But my whole point in saying in telling you that story is. When you are given a physical healing, when you are given a physical healing, not if, your appetite's going to change. Things in you are going to change. You're going to desire things that are different. They're not the same. When you understand that your body is being transformed by the power of Christ, things change. Things in me change changed. I received a physical healing from a bondage that I found myself in to drugs, alcohol, you name it. I received a (laughs) physical healing. You're not supposed to just be able to step out of methamphetamine and go cold turkey. That's not the way things happen. That's what doctors say. It's dangerous. Well, not according to Jesus. Because I just stepped out of darkness into light. That's what happens. But my physical appetite had to change too. I didn't desire the same things that I desired. I didn't want the same things that I, that I wanted before. Jesus brings transformation. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has been given to the children of men. There's nothing in your physical body that God cannot and does not want to heal. Nothing. And if you remember from a few weeks ago, the bondage that we find ourselves in is this idea, I've tried it before, it didn't work, 
what's the point in asking one more time? I've asked for prayer for healing before. It didn't work. Why bother? That's bondage. And that will prevent you from stepping into physical <coughs> healing. I'm a big advocate on this. Our pastor is a big advocate on these things as well. You've heard him talk about it in previous messages. I'm a real big advocate because I have seen physical healings take place in people's lives. Does it happen all the time? No, but it doesn't matter to them because it happened to them. Can I get an amen on that one? I mean, we've se I've seen physical healings from a person who was, frankly, they were dead. <coughs> Driving along the tollway. I've heard, told this story maybe twice before. Driving along the tollway, going to a birthday party. Never forget it. Christina's behind me. I'm driving in two cars because I had to get back up to church. It was a Saturday afternoon. And there's a motorcycle, and I, I saw him, and then I lost him because he was going so fast, weaving in and out of traffic. About three minutes later, you see brake lights. And they're backing up. Complete stop on the tollway. And Christina gets out of her car and yells at me, and she says, you need to get up there and do something. And I'm thinking, what in the world are you talking about? Well, what she was talking about is the guy was weaving in and out of traffic. One person didn't see him, moved over on him, and bounced him off the concrete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The concrete median. Bounced him off of that, and he ended up tumbling across three lanes of traffic and then ended up in the ditch. So there he is lying. Everybody's on their telephone talking. Nobody's administering to him anything because he's dead. I mean, he's not moving. His, he's white. The whole bit is going on. His leg was going a different direction, but that's a whole other story. And she said, you need to do something. And I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? He said, go pray for him. I said, he's dead. He said, no, he's not. So I walked over to him, put my hands behind his helmet. His face shield was completely gone. Put my hands behind his, his head. And here's what I said. The Lord tells you to arise and shine. The guy opens his eyes and sits up. Oh my gosh. Wow. And I look at him and I say, hey, what day is it? He says, Saturday. I said, what time is it? He, after lunch or before lunch? He says, after lunch. I said, what happened? He goes, I don't know what happened. I looked at him and I said, what do you think about Jesus? He goes, I really don't know Jesus. I said, you need to get to know Jesus <laughs> right now. He said, what's your name? He says, Michael. Of course it was Michael, okay? <laughs> right? And the ambulance somehow got through all of that traffic and arrived within about 30 <clears throat> seconds of that event happening. And they picked him up and they took him away. That's the last I saw of this guy. Why do I tell you that story? I tell you that story because it's, it's a good story. And it's a real story. And it's a personal story. And it's a story that I would not have unless I was willing to overcome the doubt and the fear of I've tried it before and it didn't work. I've prayed for people before to be healed. And it didn't, quote, quote, did not work the way that I wanted to. But you have to overcome that bondage. So tonight we're going to pray for knees, elbows, shoulders, whatever is going on in your body. It doesn't matter. God wants to heal you. He really does want to heal you. And I don't think we spend enough time interceding for that to occur. We may rest in it. We may have confidence in it. But, you know, God wants to heal you. Amen. Have a nice day. No, we're going to go. We're going to pray for that. Why? Because Jesus brings transformation to your physical body. He does. That's what he chooses to do. And when we receive it, it's a deposit of the Holy Spirit that he entrusts to us to go out and do the thing that he did for us. We are to protect the world from influences that would cause harm. Yes, amen. We're supposed to do all of these things. And we're to take that seed that God's given us in our physical body, and we're supposed to declare the testimony of that. To the world around us. And so I want to pray tonight for anybody here that needs help, health in their physical body. And I want to pray that the Lord would heal you right now where you're sitting.
that you wouldn't have to wonder anymore, that you could simply step into that. So let's do that. Let's do that tonight. I mean, if that's you, just rest in this right now and receive the gift of the Lord. Father, you've given us physical bodies. And the original design was to be free from ailments, infirmities, disease. That was the original design. So, Father, right now, Holy Spirit, right now, restore the original design. God, I pray for knees right now that need, some of them need a creative miracle. Others need a miracle of healing. I pray for lower backs, any type of back problem right now. Some of you need things to be released. And God, in the name of Jesus, release. Shoulders put back in place. Joints of any kind, fingers, I see hands that are painful for some of you. Hands, be healed right now. Somebody, their vision right now needs to be healed. And so God, in the name of Jesus, give us that vision. Correct eyesight. Let us line things up correctly. A hip needs to be put back in place. So God, heal that hip right now. And God, I pray, we pray, we're united in this. For physical affliction to be healed. For a diagnosis to be just somebody's opinion because it's not yours. That's what we need. So right now, be healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, receive the gift of transformation in your physical body so that you can go out and declare This is what God has done for me. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. Thank you, Lord, for doing that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Spiritual transformation. Obviously, Jesus brings that wherever he goes. The story of Christ is that Zacharias brought about a spiritual transformation. He had a difficult time believing But if you go and you read Luke chapter 1, verses 67 to 69, there is this prayer of a spiritual transformation that took place. So the unbelief that we have becomes confidence, and that confidence that we carry becomes a reality. So we take these steps from unbelief, doubt, fear, wondering what's going on, to a quiet confidence that we might have in Christ. And that confidence then becomes the reality. We're never at a place where we are uncertain. You are never at a place where you are uncertain of what you're supposed to do. He tells us in his word, you're not tempted beyond what you can bear. He's going to give you the wisdom. You never have to worry about what you're going to say. He says, open your mouth and I will fill it, says the Lord. Somebody needs to hear that tonight. I want to fill my mouth with what I want to fill it with, not with what he wants to fill it with. But he says, open your mouth and I will fill it. We're going to have wonder. We're going to have mystery. That's a given. But spiritually speaking, we do not ever have to wonder about how he feels about us. Because he's already said it. You are mine. I chose you. And I love you. That's what he says. I may grieve, we may grieve, but we don't grieve like the rest of the world because we have hope. We have a confidence and that confidence becomes our reality. Watch what you say about yourself and others. Just be very, very careful of what you declare over your life. Words have meaning. Words have power. That's right. And so we need to watch and guard our mouth, not, o- not only with what we say about other people, but what we say about ourselves. Right. So this is not the Saturday Night Live skit, okay? You're good enough, you're, you're, yeah, and you, gosh darn, you deserve it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a faith that is rooted in the confidence, and that confidence then becomes our reality of what is true. 
We don't need to take up offenses either. That's where you understand where true spiritual healing is taking place, is when you leave offenses alone. That social media post, that email you want to fire off, that anger that you might have in your heart and you want to just let them have it, you know when your mind, when your spirituality has been transformed, when you do not take up an offense. That's the key. Because you are spiritually alive in Christ. Christ was not offended. He prayed for his enemies. And that's where you truly understand that. He wants to do that. And I want to pray tonight. Um, and your spiritual healing is not about obediently following a list of rules, by the way. It's important to note that. It's about obeying the voice of the Lord. And what he is asking of you. See, it's going to be different than what he asks of me. I had to obey the voice of the Lord this afternoon <laughs> when I sat down. I'm like, what do you want to talk about? And I'm just going to give you something in 45 minutes. I'm like, that's yeah. not what I wanted to hear yeah. at all. Um, but he just laid it out. Spiritual healing is what he wants to do. Spiritual transformation. Some of you have been wounded badly by spiritual abuse. Some people, some of you have had things done to you in the name of Jesus. That's not Jesus. You got honest about something with, with a friend, and that was your demise. You felt as though you could be safe, and they used it against you. That's spiritual abuse. Somebody's used a position of power over you to tell you something about your life that just simply isn't true. Mm -hmm. A lot of them has to, be, has to do with divorce. You're sitting here tonight, somebody laid something on you. You're always going to be living in sin if you remarry. That's a lie from the pit of hell. I'm telling you right now. Not the case. You've been forgiven. You've been healed. And you've been transformed. And I'm sorry that you had to endure that spiritual abuse from others. So I want to pray against uh, the spiritual pain. Holy Spirit, you're the only one that we want to listen to right now. That voice in our head that is lying to us, God, you've already transformed our mind. So silent that voice. You've already transformed and are transforming our bodies. So God, remove that as well. But right now, God, we're coming after something that is, that is used against people. It's a spirit of Baal. It's idolatry, Lord. And so we go after the spirit of Baal and we say, be silent. You have no more influence in our lives. God, I pray against spiritual abuse in the area of um, manipulation and intimidation that if you do this this is what will happen no says the Lord that's not what I say I say otherwise so God we pray against Baal and Ashtoreth and Moloch all those things we just pray against them right now we say be silent I pray for healing spiritually that we would realign our lives to what you say Holy Spirit, tell us what to do. Tell us what to say. And may we be obedient to do it. Thank you for that healing. We love you. Amen. 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 And then the last one, was another one I want to highlight. Your significance is going to be transformed as well. Shepherds were the first people that received the message of Christ. They are insignificant. No families for the most part, no home. In many ways, shepherds were orphans of their day. Because of Jesus, he brings them near. And here's what God and Jesus want to tell you in this transformation process tonight. You're not an orphan any longer. Because of what Emmanuel has done. God with 
us. You have been adopted, ladies, into the daughtership of the family of God. Men, you have been adopted into the sonship of the family of God. It cannot be removed. You are an heir to Christ. And whatever he has, he tells you it's yours. Take it. No strings attached. If somebody doesn't get 20% off the top for you know enacting the will. It's right there. Your inheritance is complete and it's full. Will you take hold of that tonight? You're no longer a slave that must obey the rules. No, you are a son and a daughter of the king. So, Father, I pray for the sonship and the daughtership of these here tonight and those watching even online. And I pray right now, Lord, that you would instill in them and remove this orphan mindset, a mindset that says that they have to watch out for themselves only, that if nobody does it, if they don't do it, nobody's going to do it for them. Father, I pray against the fighting nature of an orphan, one that wants to fight to get what they want. God, I pray that we would simply <laughs> rest in you and you would bring us what we need, not always what we want. Thank you, Jesus, for doing that. Amen. Amen. And then the last one is this. Your perspective on life or death is changed as well. Um, a guy named Simeon, was there and he just hung out at the temple. And his only deal that he did, his only thing that we know about this guy is he just sat around and he prayed to God and he said, God, don't let me die before I see the Messiah. And God met his prayer. He even prays, which is pretty powerful. He says, now I can die in peace, <laughs> which is incredible to me that his perspective on eternity was changed in that moment, and may your perspective on eternity be changed as well. I know that some of you have lost friends, some of you have lost people that you love dearly, and you're wondering what in the world has happened to them. I was watching an interview with Keanu Reeves, I don't know if you've seen this or not, and he was being interviewed by somebody who was trying to set him up for failure. And he looked at him, he said, well, what happens after we die? And he looked at him and he said, all I know is this, that those who love us will miss us. And that's where some of you may be sitting here tonight. You're missing somebody. They're not here. And I pray that you'd be healed in your perspective on eternity, that you'd receive the healing that you need that you'd walk in the transformation power of the Holy Spirit. And so, Father, I pray for anyone here tonight that has a heart that's been hurting. This time of year brings about that more than almost any other time. Their laugh, their smile, their hands, the way they smell the Lord, their little quirks and habits. God, we miss them. We miss them. But God, give us a vision of them right now, of where they are and the joy that they find themselves in. Lord, may it be the case of us. In your name we pray, amen. And I just want to finish this message by one thing as I'm standing here. All the things we talked about, this transformation, are only possible if you have a relationship with Jesus, if you have been born again. And tonight as we sit here, I don't presume, I don't ever presume that every person in this room has a vibrant relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of you, it's the first time maybe that you need to encounter Jesus and you need to say, I want you as Lord, forgive me. Some of you, it's a recommitment to what Jesus is asking of you. I want you as Lord, forgive me. And even if you've tried it before, even if you've walked forward before, he says, come to me and 
and I will give you rest. So come back to him again and again, however many times it takes. He wants to meet you right where you are. So if you're here tonight and you've done that, we want to celebrate with you. Tell somebody in the group tonight what you've done. Because we want to make sure that this season and every season, you can walk in the transformation power that Jesus brings. Amen? Amen. 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 Father, we seal up what's been done and said here. God, no backlash or retribution are going to be levied against us. We don't have to worry about this. Don't let us ever imagine that when we do something great for you, that we have a target on our back from Satan. That's a lie from the pit of hell. So deliver us from these faulty ideas. But God, may we walk out of here in peace and rest and wholeness, physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. Thank you for doing all of those things. We love you. Amen. Amen. Amen.